Hello, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the first housekeeping video for the MAT 240 statistics class at S S N H U. Uh, again, my name is Michael Weeman. I go by Mike or Mr. Weeman, whichever you prefer. And what I'd like to do in this housekeeping video is go over some of the logistics of the first week, talk about some important things that you will need to address to help get set up with the Zybooks, which is uh, an important component of the class. We'll talk about the first week discussion, et cetera. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we've got listed here, what need do you need to do for this uh, first week? So we'll address that. We'll talk about my late assignment policy. And uh, you're gonna see one thing in terms of the way I accept assignments in my classes. I don't mess with the 10% deduction after the first week. So we'll talk about that as we uh, progress through here as well. We'll talk about how you're gonna get feedback or grading throughout the course, and that'll be covered inside these housekeeping videos as well. My availability during the week, we'll talk about, uh, I'm usually very quick in terms of any responses via email and the ways to get a hold of me during the class week. We'll talk about uh, strategies of success, i.e. Uh, taking a look at time management, not waiting until Sunday night to finish up everything inside the class. So we'll address that component. We'll also address, uh, there will be videos out there that have been created by the department that I post underneath the announcements in terms of what are gonna be called these challenge and participation activities. So I'll show you where those are located and then a demonstration of the Zybooks in terms of that. So we'll cover everything relative to week one to make sure you're successful and get a good start inside of the course. Okay, so what needs to be done this week? You're gonna review the first week one module and we'll address that here later on inside the presentation. There will be a series of uh, the component where you get your guided practice and your challenge activities, i.e. these participation and challenge activities. We use a product called Zybooks. It's the online portal. If you've had another class, maybe that use Mobius, or uh, my lab, i.e. my math ever, my stat lab, very similar in nature, you're gonna do the activities. And the nice thing about this is those participation and challenge activities, those scores automatically get transferred into the grade book. So we'll talk about that later on inside the presentation as well. You'll have an initial post as well as two quality responses that you'll have to do this particular week and we'll address that here coming up and then uh, guidelines for both the course projects. There is a series of what I'll call homework assignments or projects that you're gonna be doing uh, in weeks two, three, four, uh, five, and seven. One, six, and eight, those particular weeks have discussion for us. We'll address all that as we progress along. Okay, so late assignment policy. All of the Zybook components, i.e. the participation activities and the challenge activities, all of those are open the entire eight weeks of this respective course. And as I made mention at the beginning of the presentation, I don't do any deductions of if it's a week late, 10%. I don't mess with that. It just makes life a lot easier. And that goes into, uh, I know from a student perspective that we all have life happens events. So. Uh, I know that the kids get sick, you have something going on with jobs, something going on with your significant other. Uh, try to be as flexible as possible, but still conforming to where we're not grading every single component at the very last end of the class. So uh, Zyba components, uh, and we'll see that here as your first demonstration later on, you have the entire eight weeks to do all the participation and challenge activities. Those scores automatically transfer, so really, from my perspective, I don't have additional grading or feedback that I have to do every single week. Now, there will be boards out there for these guys that I will give some feedback on them. But in terms of the Zybook uh, components, those are open the entire eight weeks. Discussion forums is probably the most rigid component. These guys can only be replied to during the week they are assigned. 
And there'll be three times during the scope of the course where you have your discussion forms. That's week one this week, week six, and week eight. The, these are only uh, will be accepted in the week they are assigned. So the initial post needs to be there by Thursday uh, in week one by 11.59 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time or Eastern Standard Time, depending on when you're taking the class. And then week six and eight, 11.59 p.m. in your respective time zone. So uh, week one is a little bit more rigid because due to attendance and enrollment concerns uh, that that has, that's a firm date of 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. But week six and eight, uh, it's 11.59 p.m. in your respective time zone. So uh, those are the first two components. And then we have a series of written, what I'm calling written assignments. These are the written assignments or projects that are out there. You'll notice your first one's week two, you get till the end of week three. So I give you two weeks to finish up uh, any written assignment. And I don't mess with the 10% uh, late assignment policy on it. So uh, again, I give you two weeks, that's the life happens. Uh, that we talked about earlier. So you have the full two weeks. Now, at the end of week three, unless there's an extenuating circumstance, a zero would be administered on that given assignment. So while I'm flexible, there is manual intervention from the instructor perspective in terms of grading. So I allow for two weeks, but once the end of week three rolls around, there wouldn't be any further submissions unless it's a case by case. You're in the hospital week two, you know, I get that. We may extend that a particular week. If you come up to me Sunday night of week three on that assignment and say, hey, I ran out of time, the answer to that's probably going to be no. And the reason being is, uh, as an adult learner, I feel that students should be responsible for time management. Obviously, I know we have other external factors, as I mentioned, kids, jobs, significant other, et cetera, that we all have going on in our lives. However, there is a timeline that things need to be get done during the eight weeks within the respective course. So I give the full two weeks. And again, week three, you'll notice the end of week four, week four on that project, week five, week five at the end of six, and then week seven's project eight. So you get the full two weeks on those given assignments. So, and again, if there is an exception, please send me an email. We can discuss that on a case by case basis, but it, it generally is an extenuating circumstance, something that's major, military deployment, sickness, death in the family, those types of things. But typically speaking, everything's gotta be done by the last day of the class. At, at the end of week eight, I'm expecting everything to be done regardless of the situation. So that takes that into account. And then feedback and grading schedule. When will you actually see feedback on the material? Zybuck participation and challenge activities. The scores automatically transfer from the Zybook into the class portal gradebook. Now, something I want you to keep in mind on these guys, on the participation and challenge activities, you can go in and out of those items as many times as needed. But let's say you only do a handful of the participation and challenge activities. You may see a low score out there that you've only earned one or two points out of 25 or one or two points out of 50 points on a respective assignment. No need to panic or worry because as you continue to progress through those participation and challenge activities, the scores will automatically update. So there, there's no need to you know, uh, freak out. You'll send me an email, say, hey, Mike, Mr. Weeman, I only got two points on this assignment. What the heck's going on? I'm already failing it. You're not failing it because one, you have the full eight weeks to get any participation and challenge activity done. And secondly, the scores automatically update. So if you complete something, the score is going to update. Then you complete some more, score is going to update. Until you've completed all the respective participation and challenge activities, then you will see the full score uh, earned out of those guys. And we'll talk more about that in the demonstration of the Zybook later on. There is going to be a video section. I'll demonstrate that inside the class portal. Uh, the participation activities are pretty much uh, guided practice. In other words, if you click the wrong answer, then you click the right answer, you end up earning the points for it. The challenge activities involve mathematical calculations that are in the realm of statistics that we're working on 
inside the class, you'll see the demonstration of the challenge activities inside of a video, either from another instructor inside the department or something that I've created. But I'll demonstrate from week one where to go see those demonstrations so that you do get a step-by-step -step process. And then at the end of the presentation, how do you get the points on those challenge and participation activities? We we'll demonstrate it later on in this presentation. All right, discussion forum posts. Uh, as I may mention, this is something that is probably the most rigid in terms of uh, our grading inside the class for week one. Initial post needs to be done by Thursday, two quality responses done by Sunday at 11.59 p.m. That feedback will be available no later than Tuesday of week two. Typically, I do them on Mondays, but uh, I do have until Tuesday of week two to get that feedback out there. But typically, you can look sometime Monday morning uh, out there, and I will generally have the feedback on those given discussion forums. If for some reason it's going to be delayed, I will post an announcement and say, hey, due to my life happens events, I, I'm going to need an extra day to post those uh, feedback. But typically, Monday morning is when you're going to see the majority of the feedback that I do. It's just generally the the time window that I do the majority of feedback when I'm going through things inside the class. And then uh, how do you get a hold of me? Uh, please use email. Email is probably going to be the fastest way to get a hold of me during the scope of the class. So you have the m.weeman at snhu.edu. You're going to get a fastest response. And I benchmark to get back with you within 24 hours. Typically, it's going to be faster. I do check emails throughout the week, uh, as well as Saturday mornings that are out there. Uh, and typically, you'll get a response back within 24 hours. So I don't let want you hanging and waiting on a response from me, because I know your time's valuable, as well as the instructor faculty's time is uh, valuable as well. Now, the exception of that is typically on Sundays. Sundays, if you send something in the morning, Odds are you're probably not going to get something back until Monday. As adult learners get the flexibility of doing the work the entire scope of the week, I have to have a day that I basically pull away from facilitation outside of class, and that's typically going to be on a Sunday. I'm usually very active Monday through Saturday, but Sundays, if you send something, I may check Sunday morning, but outside of that, if you send something during the day on Sunday, Odds are you're probably not going to uh, see a response until Monday. Now, uh, again, if I run into a Life Happens event, I will post an announcement and say, hey, I'm not going to be available on a Wednesday. You won't get a response until Thursday. But my benchmark is to get back with you within 24 hours. So do keep that in mind. On to the next. Now, how are you successful inside the class? And these are just some strategies. I've been teaching over 27 years. Uh, I really love, I have a passion for math, statistics, computer science, the things that I teach and facilitate. Uh, the first thing that I recommend, especially this first week, go out and review the syllabus. Know what you're getting yourself into inside the eight weeks. If you're looking at that and say, oh, by the way, I, I really don't understand what's going to go on week three, send me the email. We'll discuss it, clarify the expectations. The second bullet point here is time management. Now, I get the life happens events for everybody, uh, and I totally understand that maybe Saturday, Sunday is the only time that you have time to do the classwork, but that's really not conducive in terms of getting the full potential and getting things done. You may only allocate, say, three hours on a Sunday night, and you may not have time to get things done. So spread things out throughout the week, you know. Take a look at, you know, allocate a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour. Go out to the class portal and say on Monday and Tuesday and say, hey, you know, it's time to, you know, I need to allocate. I got this homework assignment. I got these participation challenge activities. Set up a schedule. Work it throughout the week. That way, if it's come Wednesday or Thursday and you're in week three of the class and you're still stumped on something in week two, we got time to resolve this. If it's Sunday night at 10 o'clock Eastern and you're still stumped on something, odds are I'm not going to have time to respond back to you within those two hours. Uh, you know, I 
I'm typically an early bird. I'm up four or five o'clock in my time zone. But if you're sending me something 10, 10 30 at night, odds are I'm probably already in bed at that point. So uh, please keep that in mind. Spread it out through throughout the week. You know, engage that time management so that you are successful and not waiting until Sunday late night trying to get something done. And then you run out of time or bandwidth to get it done as possible. Please contact me if you've got questions. Odds are, uh, if you have questions, uh, or there is the general questions form that's out in the class portal. If it's not grade related, post it out there. Odds are, if uh, if you've got that question, probably others inside the class has that same thing as well. So don't hesitate to contact me. I did list or in that earlier so slide. Let me go back. Let me go to the previous. Well, not the next. Whip. Let me go previous. Previous. Here we go. I do have a Google phone number. If you want to leave a voicemail, that's fine. Uh, but this phone is not directly answered. This is just an alternative way to get a hold of me. What happens is it goes to voicemail. I get an email saying that you called, and then I will call back within a reasonable amount of time with any question or concern. But this number is not automatically answered during an office hour or anything along those lines. But uh, if you want to call, that's perfectly fine. Just know that it's going to go directly to voicemail, and eventually I will call you back because I, I may be doing something. You may be calling at a certain time. Uh, your fastest way, again, is going to be email. Now, if we need to meet Zoom or Teams, I'm good with that, too, if we need to. But I like to try and get things taken care of via email as much as possible. I already addressed that. Okay, on to the class portal. Let me close this out. Let me get into class portal. Now, if you're watching this video, this may not be the exact class, but it, it applies still to this MAT 240 Applied Stats, the class that you're currently enrolled in. So I'm going to go into course menus and learning modules, and I'm going to go into the first week since we're in week one. I'm going to bring up a couple things as well to take into consideration. The first of which, let's take a look at our respective discussion forum. Okay, so the discussion forum for this week, we're going to be taking a look at uh, identifying things that would potentially be inside of the population, what's inside of a sample. A lot of terminology this week relative to the realm of working with statistics. So uh, you can review the demographics here in terms of that, and you're going to be answering the corresponding question that's here. So if I pull up the discussion rubric. So it's going to tell you what needs to be done. It says for the initial post, post a one to two paragraphs in module one. It's got to be completed by Thursday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern, and then module two through eight by 11.59 p.m. in your time zone. And again, you have to do two quality responses by Sunday. We've already addressed that earlier. And this is how it is scored. So if you cover everything inside it's exemplary so in other words if you address all of the initial components of the initial post it's going to fall into that if something's missing uh it's going to be inproficient and then needs improvement that's typically you you posted something but it was out in left field and i had no idea what was relative to that timeliness you either you did or you didn't so uh, no one is exemplary in terms of timeliness. That's why the NA not applicable is there. And then engagement, this is your two quality responses. So typically, if it's something where you've addressed what those responses are supposed to be, it's going to fall into here or here. If you did what I call the good job post, where you say, hey, you did a great job, the one sentence, odds are it's going to be down here in one of these guys. So Please address, and I'm going to go back to the other screen here in a minute, make sure you're addressing everything that needs to be done in the initial post, as well as the quality response. And then the writing and mechanics, making sure that I or a student is not part of that post. You've addressed any spelling, mechanics, graphics, or uh, grammar concerns, rather. Uh, and then if anything needs to be documented, that you're using APA standards across that. So it will tell you inside of that initial post or responses if something truly needs to be documented. 
If it's not common knowledge, you need to make sure that you've got your corresponding documentation that's out there. So let me go back to this one. And then it's going to say inside here, it says in your initial post, make sure you address all four of those bullet points. So in other words, you need to introduce yourself, uh, describe a time, personal. So make sure you've addressed that component. Then you're going to do uh, describe how a student would uh, take the sample of the student population that would not represent it. And then answer the third question that would represent. And then look at uh, two sample methods, either random, systematic, clustered, stratified, or convenience. All five of those are going to be addressed inside of the Zy book for week one. And we'll get to that here later on. So if all four of those bullet points are addressed, you get to full credit on the initial post. And again, if it's there by Thursday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And then in the responses, make sure that you uh, choose two different sampling methods among your peers. Identify the bias. In other words, what's, what's causing the results to be skewed in that result. In that instance, you'll need to take a look at it as well. So you're using that PDF, initial post, your two quality responses out there. And again, make sure you're addressing all of the components relative to that given post. All right. Next item is the Zy book. And please pay attention to this next thing. To start your per dis, uh, participation and challenge activities, you are going to want to make sure that inside this learning module, you're clicking this and you're clicking that. What this is going to do the first time is set up a link between Zybooks and the gradebook for that assignment. So in other words, if you only click on participation activities and you don't click on challenge activities, scores on the participation activities are going to sink between the two, but the challenge activities will not. So what you're going to want to do, you'll click on participation activities. It's going to open up the corresponding uh, item here in a second or two. And this will be what the Zybook uh, looks like relative as soon as it loads in terms of what has to be done relative to that. If I come back to module one, I'm going to want to also, as I'm demonstrating here, click on challenge activities. You need to do that at least once every time for a participation and challenge activity. So for week one, you got to do both of those links. It'll sync out the grade. Week two, do the same thing. Click on those links because it will not show the grade inside the class portal unless you do that. So, okay, so let's go back. I'm going to go back to participation activities here. Module one, click on participation activities. And let's demonstrate the Zybook. All right. And it'll load here in a second. Assignments. Actually, let me go back to the other component. There we go. We got 1.1. I'm going to close out this guy here. Okay. So here's the deal. You are going to have inside of the Zybook a series of components that are associated with your given assignments. Notice there's going to be module one, module two, module three, and so on. They're tied to the week. So module one is going to be week one. Module two is going to be week two, module three is going to be week three, and so on. To get to full credit on the participation and the challenge activities, everything has to be done in 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, all the way down to 1.10. So you'll notice I'm in section 1.1. And notice I click on that hamburger to open or close that guy, so I'm in section 1.1. You'll notice as I scroll down here, you're going to get to your first participation activity. Now, I've already done this previously, and the reason why I know that is a couple things. Each of these have 
the orangest check mark, and you'll notice the bigger check mark that's listed here. So if you have check marks in everything on that, you have completed that participation activity in full. Now, again, these are unlimited amount of attempts on participation and challenge activities. So even if you get it wrong, you can go back and redo it a limited amount of times during the eight weeks. So let's say, for instance, I select that as that one and it's shown incorrect. You select it until you get to the correct answer and notice it shows correct. And then uh, you go ahead and you go through the particular guys. Doesn't matter if you got it wrong the first time, you're wanting to see correct and the check marks all listed here. So again, I, I'm not going for accuracy. I'm just showing that once they show correct, it shows up with the check marks that are listed there. You'll continue to scroll down till you find the next one. Now, sometimes on a participation activity, it's gonna ask you to watch something. So notice up here, there is no check mark. So I have not done this respected participation activity. So I click start and then I go to the next one, it's demoing it. And then the next one, So it's going to continue to demonstrate it. And let me make sure I got all parts there. It's going to demonstrate it. Part two demonstrates. Part three demonstrates. Once you have watched it, notice the check marks now there. That indicates you've completed that participation activity. Sometimes participation activities are drag and drop. So uh, in this case, it's going to tell you whether it's right or wrong. It's not right, so drag it down there. Correct. Again, green. Uh, the check mark that's listed there indicates you finished that. So I keep going down. And again, I'm not going to do this particular one, but you would have to go through, click each of these. Again, the goal is when all said and done, check marks there, check mark there. And I'm going to keep scrolling down. You have to complete that one. Again, all of it. All of this. Again, you're wanting to see the, the big orange check mark that's there. And then you get to a challenge activity. They're indicated by either participation activity or challenge activity. Now, from a challenge activity perspective, uh, these are going to be the ones that you're going to see the demonstration out there on the class portal. And later on, before I finish, I'll show you in the announcements where that particular video would be located. But for this particular one, to start a challenge activity, you click start, and it's going to tell you, uh, is a person's age quantitative or categorical? I'd answer quantitative. I check it. It's going to tell the green check mark, and you'll notice you got a blue check mark. You, typically, orange is participation, blue is challenge activities. So you'll see the blue check mark. You'll notice that that has been completed. Now, as I may mention, to get to full credit, you have to do all participation and challenge activities from section 1.1 all the way down to 1.10. So all of these guys have to be finished to get to full credit. If you're missing something, you scroll through and you say, oh, oops, I missed one, one little piece. So you may have 99% of it, but you may have missed one. And again, it's going to tell you inside there uh, to look at relative to the assignments relative to that progress. So again, everything has to be done in 1.1 through 1.10 on that respective assignment. So to get to the next section, you can click the down arrow there. You can come over here, select 1.2, same song, different verse. You're going to go through, keep scrolling through until you get to a participation activity, and then answer the corresponding questions out there. So that's the demonstration of that. The last thing I do want to show you is underneath the announcements, where do you go and see these? Uh, challenge activity videos uh, demonstrated. So 
If you go underneath course menu and announcements, may take a second or two here to load. And you'll notice as you scroll down, there is going to be a link there that says Zybook Challenge Activity Videos for Week Module 1. This video will go through any place there is a challenge activity, a demonstration of how to complete that. Because typically challenge activities involve some form of calculation. Inside here, it's going to demonstrate the underlying process or the step-by-step -step process that's involved with doing that particular calculation. I hope this was helpful. Again, if you have questions throughout the week, don't hesitate to contact me. You have my email address, as well as a way to leave me a voicemail to contact you back. Have a great first week, and uh, we'll see you in class. Thanks.